Hi, I'm Mike. This is TYT Science, and today we're doing what does the Higgs boson do for me? Okay, so I'm doing this video because we've just had one of the most fantastic discoveries in science in a long time, and I get onto Yahoo, yahoo.co.uk, if, if you can believe, my country with its illustrious history of science across biology, chemistry, physics, God. And then you get comments like these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you six comments that I saw online in response to this discovery. Um, and then I'm going to just correct them because this is an issue that needs to be addressed, especially if there are so many um, people out there who really don't have a clue. So here we go. Here are the comments. Comment number one. 2.6 billion pounds to prove, and then in caps, absolutely nothing. Okay. Comment number two. Ladies and gentlemen, your tax pounds in action. Comment number three. Yeah, great discovery. So what do we do with it now? And what a waste of money. Comment number four. Slightly longer. More intellectual, maybe. I wonder how this, how much this is costing and whether the money can be put to better use. All this chasing to prove or disprove some theory does not affect our daily lives one jot. Maybe it boosts some scientist or other's ego to justify the investment that was made in their education. Drop all this wasteful theory tracing and devote your expertise to curing or preventing cancer and other illnesses that does, grammar do, affect, uh, grammar affect, our daily lives. Comment number five, spending cuts must be affecting, or at least you got it right, science, and so they have to come up with some claptrap in order to keep them all in their job. And finally, comment number six, for your average person, no, for you average person, it means nothing. Does it put more food on their table? I appreciate the discovery, but just like Newton's gravity discovery, it's known it's there, but there is no benefit to a person's life knowing it. All right. Let's get straight to it. Okay, so let's address this issue of money could be better spent on other areas of science, such as health-related research. Now, I'm a medical scientist, a health-related scientist, so I do that end of things, but still, I know the value of basic research, and I'm going to give you examples of it right here now. Let's tackle this issue of what has Newton done to put food on your table? Well, let's start with satellites, shall we? Sitting up there in geostationary orbit, how do you think they got there? Just random, non-scientific trial and error, theory-free? Oi, George, I've got an idea. Let's get a fuck off big rocket, strap on some really expensive equipment, fire it up there and see if it stays, moves or comes back down. Of course not. It's based on theory. It's based on calculations. It'd be far too expensive to do it any other way. And what are those theories and calculations? Well, they come from Newton. They come from his Philosophiae Naturalis Principia Mathematica, written in 1687, his big treatise on how all that uh, physics works. Now, lots of people might say, okay, so much I'll grant you because, yes, that's the real physical world on our level, but we're talking about, you know, the more theoretical stuff, Einstein's relativity, that, that doesn't figure in. Well, yes, it does. Okay, global positioning satellites. That's an array of these satellites up above our globe, and basically they work on absolute exquisite timing, down to nanoseconds, firing messages back and forth. That's how they do the positioning to the degree of accuracy that they do. And they need atomic clocks to do that in order to get that timing right. But Einstein's relativity will tell you that because they're further away, subject to less gravity, and because they're moving relative to clocks on Earth, time should go differently for them. And so their clocks should record at different speeds, and indeed they do. 
And so this needs to be factored into all their calculations. And I don't need, yeah, it needs to be corrected at the end of the year just to get the accuracy there. I mean, if you didn't include these calculations, the system would absolutely go off badly after a few seconds. It's that accurate. And what, do, what does all of this do to put food on your table? Well, where the satellites for a start might help the farmers, and even if they don't, how about all the long distance telecommunications, which means the farmer can get the right stuff to the retailer, depending on the, what the retailer asks for, in the right amount, so that you've got a more efficient system, and so that the food on your table is cheaper for you. And that's just that. How about some other examples here of what basic science has actually provided for you? You may not be interested in the quantum mechanical magnetic properties of atomic nuclei, but that is exactly how the MRI machine works. Magnetic resonance imaging. To image all inside your body with beautiful clarity. And not only has this advanced neuroscience colossally, but also it's used for diagnoses in the hospital setting of so many things. If you have to go to hospital for internal traumas that, that need to be identified, you want to know that they've got an MRI machine to hand should they need to use it. You might not know much about X-ray crystallography, a bit weird and wacky, but that's how DNA was discovered. And look at what genetics is doing now. Not, not in terms of your personal health, that's in the future, but in terms of understanding the um, uh, nucleic acids of viruses and bacteria and dealing with those for a start. I mean, this issue of basic science and the applicability of it goes back to Mary Curie's famous quote, which was, we must not forget that when radium was discovered, no one knew that it would prove useful in hospitals. The work was one of pure science. And she went on to argue in that quote that that's why you cannot go judging basic science as, so what's the immediate usefulness now? What you're doing here is you're building a tool set. With your knowledge, you are seeing further and building a tool set, and you don't know how those tools are going to be used in the future because you're not clairvoyant. You don't know all the different creative ways that other scientists and industry can exploit them, but so many times exploit them it does, and there are countless spin-offs from these ventures as well. In fact, maybe the biggest irony is that these dumbass comments about CERN wasting money were made on the World Wide Web. Did you know that back in 1989, CERN was the biggest internet node in Europe? And there was a guy there by the name of uh, Tim Berners-Lee. Now, Sir Tim, because he's a Brit, like... Peter Higgs, just saying. Um, and he decided to marry this early internet technology with hypertext, with the domain name system, and hey presto, the World Wide Web as we know it today. And in fact, the first web server was called CERN HTTPD. Okay? And so if you want value for money, look at what the World Wide Web does, okay? It's not this capitalistic thing of everyone has to get remunerated for the work that they put in, and that's how the world works. Look at all the free programs there. The, f the free information, and I'm not talking about piracy. I'm talking about hard work put in by people to educate each other, to give each other power, to discover more for their own lives. All of those free programs and the free development and the information sharing, not for monetary benefit, but just for the joy of knowing and sharing and empowering humanity. And that is colossal value for money. And that was seeded at CERN, which these people are criticizing. But wait, 
That's not the Higgs boson. What will the Higgs boson do for you? Well, if you're tired and jaded and cynical, probably not much. But for a whole generation of kids, it will fire them up about science because they will see the pure awesomeness of it and the rock star status that it has today, deservedly. And even though it will do nothing for you, probably for the rest of your life, think about your great great grandchildren because I bet you that the time that has been spent by these great minds on this problem will eventually for them produce colossally more benefits than the time that you and maybe millions of others like you will spend eating junk food or sitting around watching football players collect millions and millions and millions in salary. Point made? Then my work here is done.